Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Yes, very well, thank you. Remind me where you are. I am in Maryland. In where, sorry? In Maryland, in the United Maryland. States. Have you got good weather? Oh, we have got some snow. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, now it is melted and it's pretty good. How about you? Glorious day today, really warm. That's ah. 16 degrees centigrade. Awesome. Blue, blue skies. Yeah. How do you pronounce your last name? Joe Winch Winchcombe. 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 Nice. Tell me a bit about yourself, Monica. Um... Yeah, right now I am settled in Maryland. Um, professionally, I am actually a computer science engineer uh, and I'm working in the corporate world. Um, you know, I am a data analyst in one of the healthcare company over here. Um, I am, um, you know, my birthplace is in Manipur. I don't know if you have heard about Manipur. Manipur is in the northeastern part of India. Um, and I grew up in a very conflicted place in the sense that, you know, there used to be gunshots, bomb blasts and things like that when I was growing up. And um, there was a lot of... Um, um, I mean, we, we were not able to get a constant, stable education. And my parents believed that education was very important. And, you know, um, though they were not very rich and financially, um, you know, like good in their way, they were simple teachers. Um, they put us in a convent and that's how we got our education. Um, and after my 10th grade, they sent me out of the place so that I could get a more stable and constant education. So that's how I came out from my place. But, uh, and then, you know, life happens. I got educated, I did my engineering, then I got a job and, you know, so I landed here in uh, US. But um, my heart has always been, you know, with my birthplace because I see the conflict and I just want to um, do things to inspire, empower and kind of rise above the conflict people have. So just to give an example of some of the conflict, right, like, I mean, it impacts the student. I mean, the conflict could be at many levels, political as well as ethnic. Uh, but mainly, I think what I'm focusing on is trying to bring out the humanity in the people because I think because of the conflict people are so much engrossed and people are so angry and you know a um, lot of things are happening at every level like for example recently um, I saw a video from my uh, native place where a very very young entrepreneur you know uh, was beaten to death by a mob uh, in front of children and I saw that video going viral and um, I just asked myself like, you know, what are we teaching the children, right? There were very, very young children in the video which I saw um, and I feel that the level of humanity has gone down, that we, you know, that guy like when he was being beaten up, he was actually asking for water you know, just before he died. And it gives me the chills even now to remember and see that, that, and people were jeering, you know, and people were mocking him and um, whatever be the reason, like it was alleged that he and some people were trying to steal, but I just feel that the level of humanity and compassion and closeness has been so impacted in my native place. So that is one example. And um, like I said, you know, the conflict is at multiple, multiple level. Um, one of the incident um, which I can share is because of, you know, some of the conflict between the government and the local people, there were nine people who were, who died during a protest. And the people were so 
upset and um, impacted that they um, kept the body for more than 18 months without burying. So that is the level of, um, I guess, conflict, you know, which the people in my hometown is going on. Um, and then so when I started finding the voices, I just feel, feel that, you know, all of us, many people, like some people have come out of the place because, you know, you want to get education and you want to kind of survive. But at the same time, when you come out um, of Manipur, I, I don't know if you know the geography of Manipur, but Manipur is in the northeastern part of India. And so when I come out of Manipur, I don't look Indian Indian, right? So then the question of identity comes, then the people of India don't recognize um, Manipur or kind of even, you know, understand the people within India. So again, you know, that level of conflict and de-alienation, alienation is there. Um, so yeah, so there are like, different different level of conflict and I just feel that we are all so scattered and angry and so involved in that level that I just want to bring you know different perspective and positivity and inspire people so that we can look and grow together as human beings right so that's the small little thing I was trying to do uh, as part of finding the voices. So, so what do you do with finding the voices? So, um, like I said, my parents are teachers. So while I was growing up, even after I had left my hometown, after my 10th grade, I would come, go back for my vacation. And I was, I used to interact with very young students and they would always ask me like, Hey, you know, what kind of career can we do? And you know, what are the things? And, but because practically I am an engineering student, right? So I could just kind of give them advice on the line of engineering. And also in my place, uh, people would generally focus mainly on the engineering line and medical line to be like, you know, quote unquote, like the good career choice. But I knew that there are all these different other choices what people are doing. And I wanted to expand and show that to those young people who were asking me so that's how i started like long long back like you know it's been i started in 2012 um, and i started it as an audio podcast wherein i would uh, interview you know people who are doing well in different different segments of life it could be uh, you know, movies, or it could be advertising, or it could be architecture or art, you know, different segments of life. And that's how I started. But um, it kind of led me from one to another. And then I started realizing that there are so many people who are doing so many good things um, within our own community, but they are not being, you know, recognized. Or we are not talking much about that, right? So the media is like always focusing about, oh, you know, this is happening in Manipur and it would be all the conflict and negativity and things like that. And so it kind of, I then expanded and I said that, hey, you know, this is a good platform not only to give the students an opportunity to know about the different career part and what people are doing, but also to kind of acknowledge and help people within our community to um to expand on the positive initiative what they have been doing um so yeah from the audio podcast it became a video and then i started to knowing a little bit more about the people learning more about their initiative and so right now i am at a stage where i'm like okay now i know about all this initiative what can i do right how can i give it back to them um, so that's when, you know, the idea of fundraising started and that's what I'm doing actually for the current uh, Creating the Impossible project where I'm trying to do fundraising using my oil painting and why it is impossible because, you know, I'm an engineer and I'm not really an artist, but uh, <laughs> But yeah Yeah, you can still be an artist. Yep yeah, I am having fun uh, painting and trying to bring out the beautiful landscape of Manipur to the world. And also it is my way of 
introducing you know my place that hey you know if you come to india there is another place called manipur and just don't stop like you know in delhi or bombay you can go beyond and <laughs> come visit our beautiful place so yeah so how are you doing with the fundraising uh, the fundraising i have been using instagram as my main you know source of connection i have got uh uh, you know, good response. Um, and because, you know, oil painting does take a lot of time and for me to finish a painting. So now I'm uh, coming up with the idea that, hey, you know, so when some of my paintings are completed, I would uh, create greeting cards and thank you cards. And that could be another source of revenue uh, for the fundraising. But yeah, I have got uh, really, really um, touching response um, from people you know like students like some one of the student messaged me and sees like oh you know I am really not able to afford and buy one of your painting but I just want to pay, uh, you know contribute some amount and I think that is like so amazing right like how uh, yeah. the message is kind of connecting all of us so yeah fabulous now, how often do you manage to go back I'm sorry how often do you manage to go back to Manipur? Oh, yeah. So I do go back um, quite often. And um, my father actually passed away three years ago. And um, prior to that, I really like had the um, opportunity to, you know, I wanted to spend more time with him and I did go more often. And now um, I'm trying to encourage my family to come and visit me more. Uh, but definitely at least once uh, or twice a year, I uh, go to India and, you know, visit my uh, native place in Manipur. And so I'm planning to actually go this May. And oh, yeah, and I, 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 I do want to mention my other project, which I'm doing. So as part of finding the voices, like I said, right, I saw this lack of recognition of all these people who um, you know who has been contributing and doing things for Manipur and as I have been reading like a lot of books I I saw that and I got the message that hey you know for you as a person for myself as a person to expand gratitude like the practicing of gratitude like can be one of the uh, beginners way to expand yourself um, and as I practiced it, I also felt, you know, the uh, the importance of, you know, expanding myself. And I said, hey, you know, I'm going to start a project called Thousand and One Thagachari. Thagachari in my language means thank you, gratitude, gratefulness. So I said, I'm going to do Thousand and One Gratitude Project, which means that I'm going to let people come to my platform, to my podcast, let them talk about themselves a bit and then let them share about gratitude, you know, at their personal level and then at the level of Manipur. So identify somebody at the level of Manipur whom they look up and whom they feel that, you know, they have contributed. And then at the level of uh, global, at the level of, you know, the world. So I have been doing that and it has been so amazing. I'm like at 20 and, you know, um, so this time when I go in May, I because right now I'm doing like over the call. So, you know, all the scheduling and time. So I'm at 20 and I see that it's working out. And every time I go into one of the session, I feel really pumped up. And, you know, when we release a session in YouTube, like everybody's like, oh, we didn't know about that person. So I really feel that it's one of the project which is bringing us together and kind of like, you know, expanding all of us, whoever are listening and participating. So this time when I go in May, June, I'm hoping that I would go to some of the schools and some of the institute and kind of in a group setting, um, you know, do a workshop of gratitude and kind of uh, share that. So hopefully I'll, uh, you know, accomplish the thousand and one gratitude and uh, come up with all the people, you know, whom people have nominated. So it all I mean like I think that's what I was sharing in uh, you know my last call with Michael that you know too many things are happening and all these ideas are popping up right <laughs> so now I have this greeting card and you know thank you card coming up and I'm like oh my god you know I do want to 
uh, sent all the thank you cards to all the people who has been nominated in my show. So yeah, a lot of things like popping up and coming up. <laughs> and I'm just following my intuition and just following it without analyzing. Like Michael says, don't analyze, just go with the flow. <laughs> yeah. So what's the population of Manipur? So uh, yeah, 3 million. Okay. Yeah. I hope I'm not saying that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just nice to get an idea of how, how this is. Yeah, let me look it up right now. What is it? Yeah, it's um, it's a very beautiful place, at least of what I remember. But unfortunately, yep, I'm close. 2.7 million. Yeah, so when I grew up, it's... Um, you know, it's within the walls of my father's house and school. So it would be only my house and school. That's what I remember because we were like so protected and so that we don't, I guess, get into any of the situation of conflicts and, you know, uh, protests and which were very common and which are still common. And, you know, I came out really young, right, as a teenager and, you um, as a part of doing this, like, for example, this painting, what I'm working on right now, um, it is called Zuko Valley. It is in the border of Manipur. And this lily is called Zuko Lily. And it is bloom blooming. It blooms only like, you know, in May, June. And that's why I'm kind of timing it this time. I have never gone there. And I have been painting it and promoting it, but I have never had the opportunity to go there, you know. So I'm hoping that this time when I go, I'll get a chance to go over there. And uh, so I realized that even though I have so much of love for my birthplace, actually, I have not traveled much within that, right? Because I am like, I, I was just born there in a house and then I would go to my school and very, very protected life. So um, finding the voices has been a journey, not only, I think, for the people, but also for myself to, um, you know, to learn and uh, to learn more about my identity and origin. Yeah. So what's your um, audience uh, for people listening to Finding the Voices? Yeah, so what my audience, like I have a YouTube channel and then you know my social media so those are my presence and then there are a couple of portal who picks up you know the stories and cover it and put it in their website or their page or some people would pick up some of the stories with resonates with them and put it in the newspaper um, but um, one of the thing which i am very i think grateful for is i was interviewed in one of the local TV channel in Manipur. And when they came to know about my initiative, they were like, oh, wow, you know, can we just stream it in our TV channel? And, you know, I, I'm i doing this and sometimes my quality may not be the best and, you know, the best quality because it's all internet based, right? So like, for example, I think right now our quality is really good because your internet is good, mine is good. And, you know, this recording is gonna be good. but. In my case, sometimes the recording could be really bad because of the internet connectivity in some places in Manipur or in places in India. But even so, the TV channel has like, you know, uh, has been streaming my show. Um, and because the internet connectivity in Manipur is now, I think it's better, but it's not like the presence of, I think the internet may not be the same as what you and me feel. Um, yeah. So the TV does have like the TV, the radio, you know, the newspaper does have a lot of um, communication power over there. So, yeah, my um, show does get uh, shown in one of the TV channel and they show it every Tuesday and then with a repeat telecast on Wednesdays. So, yeah, that's how I get my connection with my audience and, you know, people from some of the hills and village like young people like they would write to me and um, on you know how some of our conversation or some of our um, some of the people who have spoken has inspired them and they uh, 
let them think that oh you know I can also do this and yeah <laughs> so it's been amazing so how do you find your people to speak to uh, so what I do is um, I have like a intern um, who helps me with the scheduling um, that's one way and then the other way of course like you know like I have my uh, sign up like through the social media and that's how I coordinate yeah and then for some of them when I go um, to India I do my face-to-face -face interview uh, with some of the people and you know that's also another way for me to uh, get their interviews so yeah I have been using a lot of different ways to um, you know get them in my show and what I initially like I said when I started my audience were more like young people you know students but now I see that it's expanded to uh, you know the more older generation too so I like it because sometimes when the uh, students talk about hey you know we are not really getting support from our parents because they feel that this line of career is not you know it's not the line they are looking for and they don't really support because they want them to be engineers or doctors right and so now that we have audience who are parents like you know I feel that it's been communicated so um, the audience is definitely expanding to all different groups and particularly now that we have started picking up on some of the initiative I think definitely it is uh, you know spreading to different uh, age and diversity so how many shows have you done uh, I haven't actually sat and counted but definitely more than 100 200 yeah <laughs> over how many years uh, so I started in 2012 and now it is 2019 wow seven years yeah yeah and you know like I said this is not something I do full-time um, I generally like to um, dedicate you know some time over the weekend to do a show um, that is my goal you know uh, but it hasn't always been possible but yeah definitely I would like to uh, have one show per week so yeah and what do you base your paintings on oh uh, you mean the medium or what am I no so when you were doing the picture that you're doing behind you mm-hmm was it from a photograph? Or oh, something? yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now, like, I uh, am referring to a photograph. Okay. Yes, yes. So, um, yeah, right now I'm focusing on the beautiful places in Manipur and uh, landscape and flowers. But, of course, you know, um, hopefully I'll expand more uh, than that. But uh, I'm learning and I actually go for my painting classes uh, every Tuesday night uh, because I became so passionate about this and, you know, painting and doing being an engineer are two different things. So, <laughs> so I'm getting help from my um, coach, I should say, my art teacher who has been very um, and you know, who has encouraged me and who has been very, very helpful with his uh, critic and telling me about colors and telling me where I can improve. So, yeah. Fabulous. Mm -hmm. So how do you see your project developing? Yeah, I think, um, you know, like I said, I started in 2012, right? And um, it is 2019. And though there has been a continuous effort, I felt that I couldn't quite, you know, manifest to the level I want, right? And that's when I started looking inside and um, I invested a lot of my time and energy in self-development. And um, that's what brought me to Michael's class. Um, you know of creating the impossible I actually met him in uh, one of the uh, event I had for Mind Valley in California and that's when I met him and you know I 
saw him speak and somehow I just, you know, what he spoke resonated to me and I started reading his books and and now I see that um, as I'm looking more inside, right, I am able to, uh, or I'm, I think I'm shedding more of my management and planning and, you know, which is more of my corporate world hat, which I've been always wearing, like, hey, I have to achieve this. Um, I have to do this. And um, I think like with this project, I'm looking more insight and I'm asking myself, why am I doing this? Is it really necessary that I have to deliver this message this way? You know, what is it? I for me, okay, what is the goal? It's about connecting the to the people and making an impact. So I think I'm like questioning myself into the ways I have been delivering it. So a lot of changes I see, right? Like for example, I have never thought about the workshop which I was thinking about the gratitude project and how I can really go at the ground level and, you know, connect with the people and sit down and, you know, it's we are talking about not like fancy chairs and you know, workshop, we are talking about like really literally sitting on the ground, maybe like on the floor, on the mat and, you know, connecting with people whom I feel like truly close to. So I think um, I see I have started to open up more and a lot of things which I had as ideas, like it's all coming together. So so I do like it and uh, I'm hoping that, you know, it will it will go, you know, where it is meant to be. <laughs> yeah. It can only go where it's meant to be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. So tell me about your project. So you said you want to talk, uh, you know, about two hundred people, two hundred women. Two hundred women. So yeah. So um, which I may or may not do in the ninety days. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. Yeah. I know. That's one thing I'm realizing. Right. Yeah. I think it's all about opening up and it's not like about hey you know i need to do this like in yeah. this yeah so what is your aspiration of... i have no aspiration it's just what felt like the right thing to do uh, mm -hmm. so i'm just connecting and talking um and just seeing where it goes really yeah so i've got i've got no expectation uh, no agenda yeah but i'm talking to a lot of lovely women oh that's awesome yeah it's really nice yeah yeah, and, and it's so funny, right? Like one of the thing which I have always wanted to do and I I haven't done it yet is like because my talk show kind of focused mainly on, I have been only interviewing people who are connected somehow to Manipur, to my native place, right? And when I started doing all this self-improvement, going <laughs> inside, I was like, hey, you know, I have always been showing the perspective of people who are connected to my place and I wanted to... I, I thought about how about if I do a series of people of the world where I get people who has nothing to do with Manipur but kind of, you know, share their life, their perspective. And that was something I was thinking about. And I was like, when you, you know, said that, hey, I want yours is, of course, focus more on women. I was like, wow, you know, this is so great. So, yeah, so that is another idea and project in the pipeline in my head. Um, and, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's why I, I feel like, you know, here, like when I see all the different, like when we are talking normally, uh, you, you talk about all the different progress, like people are talking about going to Mars and, you know, like all these things. And there, like I'm seeing that we are still very much in our own bubble, right, of conflict, of land, of ethnicity of um, anger, of identity, of like very, very like, you know, and it's valid. I'm not saying that it's not valid conflict, but I just feel that like, imagine it's in my lifetime, like I've seen that and I've come here and I have had the experience of meeting wonderful people along the way and their perspective. And I still see that we are still there, you know, in that part and um, it is sad. It's really sad. Like, you know, like so many people who are angry and who are, who are frustrated and yeah, nobody's listening to nobody. And yeah. So what do you do? Um, I, 
I'm uh, a coach, so I coach people, uh, both individuals and businesses. Okay. Uh, yeah, which I really, I really enjoy doing. Again, it's it's connecting with people, or well, it's always with people, but either in a, a personal situation or in a business situation. Okay. How long you have been doing it? Uh, three years now. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. I know. I didn't even know the world of coach and coaching because when we think about coach, I was only on sports and, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when I started my personal development, you know, I was like, oh, okay, this is interesting. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, it's great fun. Um, I love um, working with people and, and just, you know, my job's only ever to point in a direction. And then, you know, the people I'm working with, you know, as they develop their awareness and understanding, they'll see more. Yeah. Um, into doing that. Yeah, that's awesome. So um, who, from your perspective, so personally, who's the most interesting person you've interviewed? Um, so right now, like, I am supporting this cause, right, the palliative care in Manipur. And so he is a surgeon in Manipur. His name is Dr. Jugindro Sorokhaibam. And when I went to interview uh, him, uh, I actually did not know much about palliative care. And he and me, when we were you know, planning for the show, I asked him, what is that you want to focus on just so that I'm prepared, right? And he spoke about the initiative he had started in Manipur and he spoke about palliative and I had to actually literally look it up, right? Like, what is palliative care all about? <laughs> and, you know, whatever you say, when I go and interview people, a lot of people really do want to express on what they do, um, about their accomplishment and, you know, awards and things like that. But when I went to interview him, he was not at all interested in talking about, you know, his himself. And I had to like poke like, you know, many questions like, hey, you know, what do you do? How did you grow up? Because I for me, when I interview someone, I really want to know about their upbringing and their environment, because I feel that that's very important to understand. And it helps shape, you know, like the personality. Right. And he was so passionately talking about this initiative and why it is important in a place like Manipur where people are so focused on conflict and anger and then there is this different section of people who are sick right and who don't have anybody um, even though you have caregiver at home it is it is really, really different um, when somebody is bedridden because you really need like a lot of support, right? Because even when you have your children and, you know, loved one around, just to have an additional team coming, you know, um, giving medical, not only med medical assistance, but things like reading a story or kind of diverting or even for them to tell something which they are not happy about, which they cannot really tell, you know, with their immediate caregiver and family. And then he started sharing about that. And I felt um, I never, I think, kind of thought about such initiative, the impact of it in a conflict zone where people are so much focused into the conflict that we are forgetting the human side of initiative. So he is definitely my inspiration and that's why when i started the fundraising i'm starting with him but of course there are like a lot of other initiatives um, which i have seen and when i started looking you know as i'm being very passionate about my painting and i'm like okay you know maybe i'll set a goal and um because it has two purpose right like when i'm doing the fundraising it's not only about the money but it's also about talking about the initiative, letting people know that, hey, you know, this is going on. Um, so I said that, okay, let me, it may not be fair and it may not be, uh, I guess, complete if I'm focusing only on one initiative. So then, you know, once I accomplish the goal, what I have set for palliative care, then I'll then move on to the next one. Like, for example, the next one, what I have is one of the guy whom I interviewed, he's actually in France. 
and he is sitting over there in France, just like me, sitting over here in Manip uh, in uh, America, and we both are doing things, you know, for Manipur. So what he does is, he is sponsoring, um, you know, young girls and boys who are not. Uh, having the chance to be educated they don't have like they are like you know being at home um, helping their parents with the farming and you know other things and he helps sponsor them for education so when I interviewed him in my show and he told me about this I was like wow you know because like I said like our place is small it's only 2.7 million people but it is very different unique diversity like there are a lot of um, different ethnic groups who speaks like different tribes like you know different community uh, who has their own you know food style and you know so even though I'm from Manipur it's not like I know everything about Manipur and I don't even like I, I may not have even met all you know the different ethnic group and here he is like you know sponsoring these little kids like in the hills and um, so that would be my you know next uh, uh, initiative wherein I'll be uh, helping you know uh, do the fundraising for the children so it's amazing and then another one which I have gone to interview was I went to this uh, home so it is a home uh, where um, uh, children like who are they are not orphans but children of you know HIV positive women who are not able to take care of their children like they are being taken care by this group um, of nuns. So I went to visit them and I said, hey, you know, can I just speak to them? I won't reveal their identity. So the way I interviewed them was I would be sitting here, the child was sitting here and I put the camera from behind because I wanted to bring out that story that, hey, you know, we have children like this, right? And nobody, uh, not nobody, but yeah, it is not well known that, hey, we have initiatives like, you know, like a group of, uh, missionaries coming and helping because sometimes uh, I have seen that in my place that there are people who um, who don't see the inner work done by the missionaries also right they think of it more on religion that hey they are just coming here to spread the religion so I wanted to go and show like you know what they are doing and guess what all these children whom I interviewed and spoke they were so nice and thoughtful but when i asked them hey what do you want to become right when you grow up you know what they said they said they want to become a nun or a priest why because their window is only that right yeah, <laughs> yeah and i was like wow you know like it's really like what you see is what you want to become and um, yeah so that's how what i do like i think like it's I also don't know who I'm going to cover tomorrow, right? Like somebody will come and tell me that, hey, Iche, Iche is, uh, Iche means big sister in my native place. So somebody will message me that, hey, you know, there is this person who is doing this. And I think like, you know, it'll be very inspiring for him or her to be in your show. And so that's how I get, you know, all these wonderful people coming in my show. Brilliant. That sounds really interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes like, you know, some of my friends and uh, relatives, everybody's like, how do you find the time? Right. Like you have two children, you have a full time job, uh, you know, like sometimes people are like, why are you even doing this? But yeah, I mean, for me, like it's a personal calling and um, I feel really, really connected and looped in into this uh, into the work I'm doing and uh, yeah <laughs> yeah like look at me right now I'm like so pumped up talking to yeah. you about it <laughs> and I can go on and on like you know about all the people I have met it's fascinating yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So, it's like a good book yeah yeah that that's what actually what I was trying to do was um, I think when my gratitude project is done right the thousand and one people I think I can, you know, write about this thousand and one people and they will be like the role model for the younger generation in Manipur that they can look up to, right? Um, and kind of share the different perspective and what different people are doing. So, yeah, it's amazing. Like one of the girl whom I recently interviewed, 
um, so she is a designer and her brand name is Kumantham. So I have always wondered, and I know that that is her maiden name, right? And you know how in India and even in my native uh, place, um, there is, I mean, people say there is equality, but there is still like we have a gap between, you know, the gender equality. So I asked her like, hey, you know, um, how come you named your brand Kumantem? I, you know, and she told me she shared a very, very inspiring story. And she's like, you know, my father has, my father and we are like only girls. They are only girls. Like, you know, three children are only girls. And many of their relatives would comment to them that, oh, you don't have a boy child. Who will carry the name of the, you know, name of your family? And it has struck to her, right, all those comments while growing up. So now that she's grown and she has her own brand and she's like a successful designer, she's like, oh, you know, I want to show it to people or it is for me that, you know, just because we are girls, our family name is not going to go away. I want to create a legacy, right? <laughs> and I was like, wow, this is so cool. So things like that. I think... Um, when I talk about conflict, I'm not very much interested or I'm not so much into that. Oh, why is that conflict? Who is wrong or who is right? I think it's more about empowerment as a human being, you know. So it, such things, I think, like when people talk, it inspires me. And I think it would definitely inspire a lot of people. And it would also ask, right, like some of the elders who are still giving comment, like about boy child and girl child and carrying the family's name. They'll think about it, right, when they hear that, oh, maybe I shouldn't open my mouth and say that. <laughs> so, yeah. Good for her, really good. Yeah, I know. I was like very, very inspired, uh, you know, when I heard her speak. And um, I think sometimes... I don't know the person and I don't know why they are doing what they're doing. And when I talk to them and let them talk, um, I think I kind of let them drive, you know, the interview uh, more so uh, because I really want to bring out what is inside in their heart, you know. So, yeah, it has really worked out well for me. It's lovely to see you so passionate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I wish you every success. It's been um, fascinating talking with you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your time. And, uh... No, 